In the previous demo, we showed how we can script out an integration services package using Bimmel. So that was just like a one package we created using a fairly static script. What we want to be able to do is to pump metadata into that script. So we've created our script pattern and now we want to pump metadata into that script pattern so that we can generate a number of packages um, to automate the creation of packages for a number of tables. Uh, to do this, I'm going to choose three tables out of AdventureWorks, the normal three tables that everyone always chooses, which is product category, uh, product, and product subcategory. And this is our source database, and we're going to load them to um, this build demo database here where we've got the, th the three tables, the three stage tables. So, something that we can do in Bimble is that, as well as script packages, we can also describe metadata for a database. So we're going to create another Bimble file. And these are going to be our table definitions. And for the sake of time, uh, I'm, I'm not going to type all this out. I'm going to copy and paste. So what we've got here, we've got um, we've got some metadata in an XML format, which is a Bimmel script that describes our tables that we want to load to. We're only really interested in the production schema, so I'll, I'll just delete these for clarity. So at the top, we've got our database. It's our stage database. So our stage connection that we've already created in the last demo where we create the connection, scripted it out and it appeared at our project level. And we've got the production schema and then we script, uh, we script out the tables. So we've got three tables. And we've got all the columns, data types, lengths, precision, scale, whether it's normal, etc. And all the, all the attributes you need to describe a table and a column are available in Bimmel. Uh, we don't have them all here, like we can script out whether it's an identity and etc. But we don't have that here. So, and what we're describing here is the target table because we're loading from AdventureWorks to Stage. This is our target. But what we can do is that we can put in annotations. Uh, these annotations can describe anything essentially, and any element can have an annotation. Uh, essentially, what we're doing here is that we're using the annotation at table level to say what our source data schema is and what our source data object is for this particular table. And it just so happens that it's the same. We're going to put it in a schema called production and we're going to put it in a table called product. But we don't have to. So all I'm, I, this is a way of saying that um, whilst we are mapping like for like schemas and like for like table names, we don't have to. We could we could map them to different table names and different um, and then different schema names. So we've got three tables here. We've got three tables here. So we've got product subcategory, product category, and product. Sorry, product. And then on to the Bimble script. So we're going to need a dynamic. Bimmel script. So we're going to create another Bimmel script. Uh, we'll rename this. And again, for the sake of time, I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm not going to type it out. And this is where Bimmel becomes really, really powerful. Um, this is how we pump in metadata into our table, into our um, integration services patterns. So what we can do in Bimmel, we can actually put in snippets of C sharp. Uh, so anyone that's ever programmed ASP.NET or ASP in the early days, you sort of used to write your HTML uh, that would actually, that would render on the client and and the client web browser. And then on the server page, you would put in these um, these um, markup elements to indicate that you're going to execute C# -sharp code or or some other code, you know, like VB code on the server. 
so this is kind of effectively what we're doing so this is the same package pattern we had before except all we've done here is that we've inserted a bit of C-sharp uh, and this is all available in the BIML API this, this is all BIML language there's nothing extra customization I've put in here to get it to do this this is all available in BIML and what we're doing so we're doing it at the package level we want to create multiple packages per table so what we're going to do is we're going to loop the table tables in the root node of table so that XML I showed you that describes the tables we're going to pump that XML into this script and this C sharp is going to operate on that XML so for each table in tables we're going to create a package and there's some other C sharp at the top here to pull out some other stuff that we need to be dynamic in this in this um, script. One of those is the source data schema name, this, the source schema of the um, table, um, the table name, the source table name, and, re and remember we had those in tags, so we can just use this table get tag, get table get tag, given the name, and that will pull our source schema name and our source table name. We can also get the table name and the schema name of the table that we're loading into so from our table definition and we do that using this syntax here which is again and um, this is part of the BIML API we can just use it. Another cool bit of the BIML API is that we can get the column list so rather than hard coding um, the columns or doing it some other way and uh, loads of parsing and string concatenation and uh, we can, all we need to do is call get column list on our table and it will give us a, a list of columns basically comma separated columns and then we can pump that into a select statement uh, so this is again is generic we can do this for any set of columns we can do this for any uh, any schema and any table so we've got our variables that we need and then we just basically pump those into our um, our package script so here we, we've we're using those variables to define our package name and we again we use these angle brackets and hash signs with an equals to, uh, to, to basically write the variable into the script so we've got our destination so destination schema and destination table name we're using that to name the package again we, we're using these variables to, to generate the truncate statement uh, we're, using, um, we're using these variables to, uh, for the data flow and here is where we inject the SQL where we uh, basically generated the SQL up here so it's all again uh, this is slightly more complicated to write and gets a bit more finicky and just because bids no longer sorry Visual Studio no longer knows uh, what we're doing here it thinks it's an XML file so as soon as you start putting the C-sharp injection in here you won't get the IntelliSense anymore so it's a good idea to create all your um, uh, basically BIML patterns uh, using uh, the script without the C-sharp injection and just keep a set of those files as your basic patterns somewhere so that you can easily sort of maintain and extend them and then have a, a separate set of files with our C-sharp injection um, and we just basically um, put in a C-sharp injection afterwards after you've written your BIML script and uh, so we're basically pumping that in. We've got a for each opens here, and that here here is where it closes. So you do need to know some C sharp, but again, we're not designing uh, full object oriented APIs. We're just kind of using them, and uh, some basic uh, string allocation, and some basic calling some functions. Um, that's that's kind of all we're doing really. Um, and it does get a bit messy to look at, and it. So you kind of this takes a little longer maybe than just scripting a BIML package, um, but it doesn't take as long as creating 250 odd individual integration services packages that load 250 odd tables with all different metadata. So this would took me about um, uh, 10 minutes to write probably. 10 minutes to write and it would probably take me imagine I had about 400 stage tables to create that would probably take me a couple of days and um, how many of those would be have errors in them because um, I got distracted and, and probably started dribbling at my keyboard creating that many stage packages um, so how we render this then 
what we do is we um, we've got our table definitions and we've got our create dynamic packages definitions so we select the table definitions actually I've pasted that into the wrong place so we select our table definitions we select our create dynamic packages in that order because that's the order it needs to know about them it's going to just execute them in order so it needs to it needs the table definitions before it can put them into the um, into the script that generates the packages and then we right click generate packages uh, this is just a warning because um, well I won't go to it into it too much now there's no no errors here and it's creating our connection managers again because um, basically we've referenced them again and it's created three packages for us um, because that's how many table definitions we had in here and again we can just execute these so if we look in each one that one's for product that one's for product category this one's for product subcategory um, and because we've already got a pattern that we know that works we know all these are going to work effectively. It's the same pattern, it's just different metadata. And we've created them in seconds, and you can imagine we could have had 50, 100, 200, 500 packages created at this point. So it may have occurred to you that all we've done is replace the manual creation of 200 odd sys packages to load tables with the manual creation of this metadata to load tables. Um, in actual fact, I haven't typed all this out. What I've actually done is that I've scripted it off from SQL Server. In later videos I'll show you how we've done that. I'll also show you how we've automatically embedded this into our ETL framework that takes care of uh, uh, process logging, data lineage logging and stats locking of how the packages run and we've got a bunch of reports sitting on top of that to visualise it, which is pretty cool. Okay, so one final quick demo that I'm going to show is that a manual task is not only creating the packages, um, another manual task is actually creating the tables themselves. So if you've got 200 odd tables, you've got to create those tables. Uh, there's some pretty good tools in SQL Server and, and database projects to do that. However, um, you can also do it using Bill, which can be pretty handy. So I'm going to delete my tables um, in my stage database. And I'm going to generate them using Bill. Uh, so what I'm going to do is add a new Bill file. I'm going to rename that to create tables and in here I'm going to put in a, BIML, a dynamic BIML script uh, so I'm going to use that uh, table XML table definition XML that I use to create the packages and again it's a similar methodology and we're using for each except we're going to use it outside inside the task itself uh, and we're going to execute a piece of SQL for every table. Uh, and there's a handy little function inside the Bimmel API which is get table SQL. And that will just return me uh, the SQL that's required in order to create the table. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, so what I do is I select my table definitions again, select create tables in that order, and I generate my sys package. And there we go. And there we see we've got three tasks, they're executed in parallel this time uh, because they don't need to be linear uh, and if we look in here uh, BIML has automatically scripted out the table creation for us I can then execute this and it's created our tables for me Again, as I said, uh, what we've got in BIML is that we've got pretty much everything we need to describe a table. So if we want to change these things, whether something needs to be an identity, whether we want different compression, we can change that in our metadata and it will come through on this table script. Okay, so that has wrapped up our basic introduction to BIML. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you can now go away and script out all your packages. 
In the next video I'm going to show some more advanced techniques of how to use your own custom APIs. I've used my own custom APIs to make my BIML scripts a lot more tidy. Uh, they can get pretty messy pretty quick. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Thank you very much.